What up, everybody? We are back. Brand new episode of R2C2. Thank you to everybody uh, who downloaded and listened to Aaron Judge last week. Uh, that episode made the rounds because, uh, you know, Aaron doesn't do a lot of stuff. So, uh, you know, you come out of some, you know, level of hibernation in the offseason and you come on R2C2 and everything you say is going to turn into a news story, which <laughs> we don't mind. Um, and, uh, and it was good to see uh, the pod shooting up the rankings. So thank you guys for listening. If you haven't listened to R2C2 with Judge yet, make sure you go back and listen on Spotify or you can watch on our new YouTube channel. It's just YouTube, uh, you know, dot com and the backslash R2C2. If you search it on YouTube, you'll be able to subscribe for free. We're, we're starting to build that base. So let's keep it going. Tell everybody, you know, um, we talked about how I have had COVID. Thank God, mild symptoms. Been without symptoms now for four or five days. Finally tested negative. Yay. Uh, so all on the mend. Um, Cece was supposed to go on a, a trip over the holidays. And his whole family uh, got COVID, so he wasn't able to go. So guess what? C's taking that trip now, but that's okay because we have not only an incredibly timely uh, filling co-host today, but a ridiculously talented and a man who is familiar with R2C2, Cameron Mabin is back on the program. Cam. Welcome back to R2C2, man. My boy, what's going on? It's good to be back, man. It's been way too long, way too long. Man, I mean, you know, I have to say, when we first had you on in 2019, I right away was like, wow, you know, this man is just electric on the mic, and he has a future in this business if he wants one. And lo and behold, it just gets announced this week. I knew a few days before, but it gets announced this week that Cameron Mabin is joining the Yes Network. You're going to be my teammate, man. I'm so excited for this. Congratulations. Right? I, I mean, I appreciate it. You know, but who, who would ever thought, you know, let me say who would ever thought. You thought, you know, a few years back, you know, like I said, we had this conversation a few times, you know, coming up to me, telling me, Cam, you know, when you're done, I think you might have a future in TV or Radio something from a media standpoint. And I remember looking at you like, you know, hey, Ruko, you're my guy, but hey, I, you know, I'm a, I'm gonna play for like six more years, bro. I got, <laughs> I don't, I don't know anything about about any TV or media, but and, you know, I look up and here we are. I tell people all the time, the reason why I'm here, one of the, one of the reasons why I here who sparked that answer is Brian Ruko. Um, I so I appreciate you. You know, it's like that college that sees you as a freshman that you know you, you don't even you're not even thinking about school and they send you a letter and you go what so you start hey you know i might i might have i might have something here so you're <laughs> that college that saw something in me before anybody else so i appreciate it my brother thank you hey i honestly like i'm not gonna lie man it makes me feel good to hear that because i i uh to see it come to fruition and also i know the kind of career you're about to have in this business too so for me to just be a part of the spark, I take great pride in that. So thank you for sharing that, man. Yeah. And I, and and dude, congratulations, man. I mean, um, you know, there's so much to dive into uh, with you about this. I, I guess the first thing I just want to ask you, because you just brought it up in, in when I initially brought up the media opportunities to you, you thought, hey, I'm going to play a lot more years. What made you decide, no, you know what? Now is the right time. 2021, that's my final season. I'm shutting it down. I'm ready for the next chapter of my life. You, you know, <clears throat> the beautiful thing that I love about being retired is I can be completely honest now. I don't have to kind of sugarcoat my interviews or sugarcoat <laughs> what I'm saying. And, and just yeah. to be honest, you know, to be honest, after 2019, after that year that I had with the Yankees, after the experience that I had with the Yankees, I mean, feeling like like I was completely rejuvenated from a from an energy standpoint, from a passion standpoint. Um so a lot of credit to the fans, the organization for, you know, allowing me to come in and have the opportunity to play well there. But honestly, after that season, you know, I ran into my 10th full year during that season. At some point, I think it was June or July. Um, so reaching that mark was huge. And then having the season that I had, you know, I was really proud of what I was able to do. I felt like I really felt like I'd, I had a lot to do with keeping the team afloat, just to be honest. Um, 
And, when, and after the season was over, man, I had like 28 minor league offers. And I was just like, what the hell is this about? You know what I'm saying? You know, yeah. no face, no name, same resume. Analytics, you know, sitting down with my agent at the time, it was like analytics says, hey, you're going to make six to seven million bucks. And then I turn around and, you know, and there's 28 minor league offers on the table. You know, we, we call that collusion, um, but it's cool. You know, it's like, yeah. you know, you're an older guy. You play well. We appreciate it. But, you know, like we're going to make you have to settle for a deal. So, you know, after that 29 season, I actually was I kind of was really discouraged going into the COVID season. Um, and then, you know, this past year, you know, just going back to the minor leagues and not being able to enjoy the process, so to speak, you know, having to show up to spring training and I, I need results. The first day, you know, I feel like I didn't yeah. result to me. Like I, I was in the tours, you know, okay to say, I think I had one good spring training in 15 years. And that was, you know, that was the year after I went to the, the DR and played winter ball until December. I came back ready to go. Um, but, but any other year was like, I used spring training to get ready for the season. Once I knew I made it through, I was going to be ready to go. As always, I was going to bring what I bring to a team. But, you know, looking at the back end, it was like, you know, you got to have those results now. If yeah. you're killing it, hey, you know, you're going to go to the minor leagues and you're going to be pretty much an insurance piece. And, you know, being away from my children, you know, I got a, you know, I've got a, a 14 year old, a nine year old and, and a, you know, a, a soon to be six year old next month. You know, 15 years of playing at the highest level, 15 years of, you know, for me, the only thing that matters is winning, you know, having a win only mind state to go backwards to a minor league, you know, to the minor leagues and have to think, you know, it's all about me, 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 me. It's, it's a real selfish mentality, which I don't have, you know, I, you got to be somewhat selfish, but you know, I was always a firm believer. If you do what you need to do to help the team win, your numbers are going to be there. You know, yeah. so that was as, as selfish as it got for me, but going back to the minor leagues, it was like, who gives a shit if you win, who cares? You know, it was like, did I get mine? And like, that, that's draining for me. So after this year, you know, I came home, sat down with my wife and I was like, yo, I think it's time to, to, to at least have, you know, Go ahead and call it a career, uh, you know, 27 hits away from a thousand. I, I was really at peace with it, man. I was like, you know what? I'm proud of what I was able to do. I feel like I made every team better, whether it was a rebuilding team or a bad team. I feel like some way, somehow the locker room was better with me in it. And, I, and you know, I'm OK now to, to sit back and, and, and be and be a member of, of a new team and, and new teammates, new colleagues, you know, to kind of show me the ropes and show me the way, bro. I'm excited. Hey, man, and we're excited, too. And, and I do just want to say there was good reason to believe that you were going to get offers uh, that didn't come in 2019. You know, if you look at your numbers in the 82 games you played with the Yankees, you hit 285. You had a 364 on base percentage. You nearly slugged 500. Yeah. Your OPS was 858, which is outstanding. You had 11 home runs in 82 games. Yeah. You know, I mean, throwing nine stolen bases as well. I saw firsthand the impact you had in the clubhouse, too, which was remarkably tangible. And no staff for that. No staff no. for character. Right, you right. Know? Exactly. Right. So, You've been around. You do hoops. You know, I yeah. love, again, you know, again, you're yeah. my guy. Yeah. I'm watching you constantly. You know, hoops is, <laughs> you know, hoops is my sport, but it's yeah. like, you know, you're around. It's like there, there's no there's no staff for character, bro. You know, you can try to put together a huge payroll and a, every superstar you want to, but... If things, you know, if you don't have a CC Sabathia in the locker room, you know, yeah. if you don't have a, a Brett Gardner in that locker room, a, a Aaron Judge in that locker room, things can go south quick, man. Yeah. You, know, you know, again, and I, and I pride myself on being one of those guys, too. You know, yeah. I may have not always been the most talented in the locker room, but I definitely was a guy who some for some reason, guys were always coming to me. Cam, what you got on this? What you got on yeah. that? What do you think about this? And, you know, that, and that means a lot to me. So. There's no character for that, man. That's why, again, eventually I want to be in somebody's front office because I, I know I can make a make a team better, too, man. I, I've been around. I've seen what it takes. And I really do truly think I can help on that aspect. That's another conversation, man. But I and I think you can, too. What do you think it is, Cam? Like what do you, has that has there been a um, a change in the value that's put on you know, veterans or leaders or, or positive presences in the locker room? Like, how has that evolved maybe throughout the 15 years that you were in the big leagues? How much different it was the way that was appreciated or not at the end of your career versus in the beginning? Or did it change? Yeah, oh, 100% it changed. You know, when I came up, Gary Sheffield, Maglay Ordonez, Pudge Rodriguez, Carlos Guillen, 
Brandon Nims, Placido Polanco, Sean Casey, uh, Marcus Timms, you know what I'm saying? Kenny Rogers, Ty Jones, like, you hear, I mean, all these guys are in their mid thirties. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Early to mid thirties, superstars. So, and I was a 20 year old in that locker room. You're, you'll never see that again, you know, but, but to add to that point, you know, I miss the, and it's, and you know, times change, you know, you can't be as, uh, you can't heckle as much. You can't haze as much. You know, I get that stuff. You can't make a guy, you know, carry your suits for a whole season because they might get upset and they might go run and tell, you know what I'm saying? They're like everything's a little bit more sensitive, which I get, you know, I'm, I'm always, I'm like, it's like the, uh, the iPhone. You got to update, you know what I'm saying? You got to update the time. You can't just, you can't keep skipping that update. You know what I mean? So I'm a big, you know, m- move with the times, but I miss that. I think those guys need that. And then you look at two, take a, take a look at who's won the world series the last five years. Look at those teams. Veteran leadership. Yep. A lot of veteran leadership in those teams. Yep. It ain't, it, not a, it ain't a young squad out there who killing it. I mean, they can be as exciting as you want, but look at the last five teams who won World Series. A huge veteran presence. You know what I mean? So even going back to the Nationals, you know, I don't want to discredit anybody, but even the Nationals a, few, a couple of years ago, like yeah. the, oldest, the oldest roster in baseball. You know what I mean? You go back for that, the Dodgers, veteran presence. The Astros, the, 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 uh, the Cubs, when they won their first one, huge veteran presence. So... That's where, you know, the, 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 it, it's changed a lot, you know, is then that comes with the tanking and a lot of other things we could talk about. Too. Yeah. Well, see, and the interesting thing is like, I even appreciate in my business now, uh, this perspective, because I'm 35, I'm still young in my business, but I started really young. I did my first NBA game when I was 23. And, you know, at that time, I, of course, had the perspective of like, I'm ready for anything, you know, and maybe there was an ability in there that would say at some point I'd be ready for anything. Right. But Mm -hmm. what what I appreciate now and I know I'm going to feel the same way 10 years from now and 15 years from now is there are just certain things you can only learn from experience regardless of your ability, regardless Absolutely. of your, of your Absolutely. talent, right? Like, Absolutely. so like there's, there's just certain things that like, yeah, okay. Like I understand that, you know, there's a financial component and yeah, maybe I can get this guy who's going to produce a little less than camera Mabin for, you know, a third of the price of camera Mabin. But if I make that decision five, six times on my roster, like I'm uh-huh. forgetting about all the other things that only can come with Cameron Mabin, you know, Absolutely. like, and, and I, that's how I feel now too, where like, there are things when I'm in a broadcast that I'm actually able to, to, to consciously think like, wow, like I didn't know that when I was 30, like it took reps for me yeah, to be able to absolutely. do this. You know, it, it took absolutely. reps for me to be able to, and, and, and I think of it in the same way, Cam, it's like, you know, you can, it, right. There's like maybe maybe there were times where it went too far the other way and people were paying money that they didn't need to pay for guys who weren't going to produce. And, and obviously we understand like business is going to necessitate that that's not going to last forever. But it, I think in some ways the pendulum swung too far the other way now. Yes. Because, yes right. Like, yes, we're yes. Miss, we're missing some key things that yes. that impact teams that are probably being undervalued. Thank you, bro. That's I mean, 100 percent. And I and I say it from. A standpoint, my own experience. I had a guy tell me when I was in, in, in San Diego, Alonzo Powell was assistant hitting coach. And I remember coming off a year where we lost in 80, 90 games, but you know, they got to give out team awards. And I think I was the plot Padres player of the year, you know, two years in a row. And then I was coming up on another year where I was struggling, I was injured. And when I came off an injury, I was kind of in a platoon role. You know, it mm. was like, you know, you're going to face the lefties, but I was hot. I came off that injury and I thought I was being a spark for the team. So I was kind of walking around in my feelings, kind of, which you don't, which you've been around me. You don't see very often. Yeah, no. Know? Right. And, and, you know, I'm a, I'm a notoriously positive person can control what you can control. But I was, I was upset. Cause I thought, man, I'm, I'm helping a team. I was the, you know, I was the team's player of the year, two years in a row. Like what's going on. I thought I'm the yeah. everyday single fielder. Why am I platooning? And Alonzo Powell came to me and said, listen, man, he goes, I know it sucks. I know it's not what you want to be, be happening right now, but you're a type of guy. He goes, whether you're, you're the best player in the locker room or not, he goes, you affect people more than the best player in the locker room. Mm. He goes, so if you come in with, the, with a pissy attitude and you're pissed off and screw this guy, forget that guy, 
And, and you do that. And Yonder Alonzo is like, yeah, Cam, I don't like him either. He's a you know, freak, freak that guy. And then, you know, Will Venable was like, yeah, I don't like him either. Now three or four dudes, that might trickle off to four or five dudes. Now two dudes that look up to them or listen to them. And they're like, man, fuck that guy. Or Screw that guy. Yeah. And now you got six dudes pissed off. And now you got a shitty club room. You know, and if that, again, that's where the character that there's no stat for that. You know, having man, a guy. Man, you, you're, so, you're so right, though. It, that's how it keep, devolves from there. It's, and that's how and literally yeah. we don't talk about it much. But that's exactly how it happens. You know, it's you know, we always want to blame a coach and a coach is a leader. I believe any great team. The great teams takes on the characteristics of the coach. You know, they always yeah. want to yeah. anoint a player, the captain, and you you know, but I think the winning teams, they take on the, they take on the personality of the coach. And again, the it starts with that guy, you know, like I don't want this guy in the locker room. Like he's great, but he's a cancer. Like he's in his shitty mood, and you got two young dudes who looked up to him, and now they're like, Yeah, he's right, because we looked up to him the last five years, and now we're in a shitty mood. And it's like it's a slow, snowball effect, and you look up and you lost 70 games, 80 games, and it's bad turmoil, turmoil and no chemistry. And again, it's always bigger than just performance. You know what I mean? And it's like who you literally put in that locker, in that clubhouse together goes Man, a long it's so way. True. Like if you think about it, anybody can relate to this too, right? If you just, if you have some sort of team at work, no matter what your job is, and all of a sudden you're accounting for someone's negative energy, it takes things away from you. And especially if it's someone who normally is an energy giver. And now exactly. all of a sudden they're not. And you're like, whoa, what's going on? Now my whole yeah, stasis yeah. is thrown off. Now I'm wasting energy on this instead of my preparation, whatever. Mm -hmm. So, man, I... Um, well, uh, an MLB team's loss is uh, the Yes Network and media in general's gain. So, hey, I appreciate uh, it. <laughs> so, and the fans as well. I have to tell you, and I'll tell our, our audience this, um, when you came in and did uh, your audition for Yes, right away, I was nervous. I was nervous <laughs> as hell, man. Listen, Were it, was you? Good. it was it was good nervous energy. You know, like I said, it was a new avenue I'm trying to navigate. But I, not to interrupt you, but I had a ball. Michael K. Listen, no joke, man. I, and I'll keep saying it. That dude was so amazing that day. Oh, that's uh, great, man. That's great. Like, I mean, literally, I couldn't thank him enough for how amazing he he you know he was, Troy. Jared, all of those dudes, man, they were incredible. I, they made it, you know, they made it so enjoyable for me to, you know, want to come back and want to be a part of the team. You know what I mean? Because again, preparation is huge for me. I, I'm a big, you know, I kept saying, hey, prep, you know, okay, how am I going to prepare? Like, how do you guys get prepared? How does Ron Rucco get, you know, I text you, yeah, you know, I want to yeah. pick your brain. How do you get prepared? You know, like, yeah. this is new for me. It's a lot of stuff. I mean, if not, I was up, you know, three o'clock, you know, looking <laughs> up stuff. It's it takes a lot of work. So, I, you know, even from that certain point, you know, I listen to you guys. And you guys are great, but you guys put in a lot of work, man. For anybody who does not realize the amount of work you guys put in, the amount of homework and due diligence and, uh, you know, background checking. And it's crazy. You know, you got to come out of your shell to ask people, can I get a little give me a little nugget yeah, here and there? Yeah. You know? I pulled that the other day. I called two of my boys. Yo, give me something for the lock. Wait, 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 how you guys feeling? I, you know, so even getting to that point is all all new for me. But uh, it, listen, the experience was was awesome. The, ex the audition <laughs> experience was incredible. And, and you know, as soon as you were done, I had Troy, who you referenced, Troy Benjamin, uh, who's the the lead producer for the Yankees. He's he is uh, he's one of my closest friends, and. Um, I, when you were a Yankee, I I told him I was like, dude, we should be tracking Cam when he's done. He he will be a great analyst, and he texted me the second. And I didn't. I don't even know if I knew. I knew they were interested in you, but I don't know if I knew you were auditioning. And he texted me the second you were done. He was like, dude, and and Troy's not gonna just like blow smoke or anything like that. And he was just like, Cam was incredible he crushed his audition and yeah, then mike that, yeah. my michael texted me too and he was like oh my gosh i did this audition with cam he was incredible and jared who's our our vp of program of uh production now uh who's um who's one of the guys who first gave me a shot back when i was interning with the yes network mm -hmm. when i was 19 jared and ashley fagazi are the ones who then uh said i should do stats in the booth for michael and that kind of snow you know got yeah. the, the ball rolling for my career there. Um, 
Jared. Shout out Ashley world. too. Shout yeah, out Ashley Ashley's Davis. amazing. She's it. Yeah. Look, if Ashley left, the whole network would crumble. I get. I give that, credit where credit is due. Yeah, Shout out yeah. Ashley for Yeah, yeah. She, yeah she's, she's amazing. She's amazing. If if Ashley left, none of us would know what to do. <laughs> yeah. And, a Ash Ashley to the Yes Network is what Sadie Zillow is to R two C two. Everything, hey, everything crumbles without them. Uh, so, it, but it, but um, Jared, in twenty nineteen, when you first came on R two C two, he said to me, he was like, "Man, I didn't know much about Cameron Mabin." It's like I'm gonna root for this guy forever. Oh my <laughs> gosh, he's great. So I love that now. You know, you're here working with all of us. So I have to, like, I I have to. Uh, I have to ask you when you think about like what appeals to you about cause, cause like for me, for the audience, I think it's going to be obvious what makes you, what's going to make you great. What appeals to you about being in the booth, doing baseball games? Like, why is this exciting for you? Well, yeah, right. We've been, we've been, we're being transparent um, yeah. to be, you know, to be completely transparent. I love listening to the game. Um, I really enjoy, like I said, listening to Mike. Okay, listen to David Cohn, listening to, like I said, Nate Burleson, um, listen to even the guys who don't do the broadcast. Yeah. Um, for me, you know what? There are, are a lot of watch baseball too. There's a lot of people out there that buy the jerseys, they come to the games, you know? So, you know, just to be honest, you know, I'm a people person, I love everybody. But I thought, you know, what opportunity to give people a different perspective, a different voice, a different flavor. You know, um, 15 years of experience. I've been in three different decades of, of baseball. I've had a chance to see some of the, I want to say older greats, but again, like I said, a generation of early 2000s players and, and 90s players that I had the opportunity to play with to mid 2000s to, you know, where we are now. It's just, you know. The opportunity that I had, the experience that I had, that I was able to have, it's like, I want to share that with people. You mm. know, I, I'm a people person. Um, I enjoy, you know, sharing moments. So it's like, why not share share those moments with, with the fans? Um, I've got so much love from the fans. It's like, I want to give back. I'm a big reciprocator. I'm a big giver. I'm not a big, I don't do well accepting gifts, but I, I love giving. Um, so it's like, what an opportunity to give back. And again, too, when the Yankees, again, I'm going to say Yankees, Yes Network calls you New York. I fell in love with New York playing for the Yankees. So to have an opportunity to cover the Yankees, you know, I think one of the most historic franchises in sports history, you know, the mecca of, you know, we say basketball, but the mecca of, I mean, New York. If you yeah. can play in New York, you can do, if you can do anything in New York, you can survive. You can, yeah. you can do great things. So the opportunity to come to the Yes Network uh, cover the continue to be feel like I'm still somewhat a part of the Yankee family. It, the opportunity was, was it couldn't have worked out better for me, man. I, I couldn't turn it down. And like I said thinking about guys like you who saw something to me earlier. It's like the worst case that the worst case scenario is that you can be bad. I mean, it's you know that's like again life is built on how you bounce back. So I'm a big big proponent of you know uh, criticism is good. Any criticism is good criticism. That's how you grow and. I'm excited about the journey, man. Like I said, I want to, and I want to do it at the highest level. What higher level than, than New York and, and Yes Network, to be honest? Hey, man, I, you know, I know the schedule is still being uh, finalized, but um, I think there's a good chance we're going to have some series together, man. I can't wait. Man, how much fun would that be? I mean, see, oh. like, seriously, you know, I'm talking about making magic, man. Like, yeah. You know, making magic. too. And then, you know, a lot of times, too, going back to your question, man, you know. Yeah. I, I'm by, by I'm by no means the smartest guy in the room, you know. And I want to, you know, I want to be able to connect with those fans who they don't know all the numbers. They don't like tell me what's going on. Tell me what's happening. Why it's happening? Yeah. Can you really explain it to me where I understand it? You know. So a lot of those fans out there, they just want you to tell them what's going on in the game, man. Like tell yes. them what's happening, why it's happening, and I want to bring back that that aspect too, just that organic aspect. Well, what you'll what you already know from playing there. But what you'll appreciate in a different way being a part of the S yes network is the Yankee fan base and their attention and passion on a night in night out basis is unlike anything else in sports. It's unbelievable. It's the same and as when I was on the field, man. It, that it, it, literally, you felt that. I tell yeah. people. And how was it playing for the Yankees? I said, those pinstripes were a little bit heavier than every other uniform I put on. <laughs> Same material. They felt a little bit heavier. And again, it's because 
everybody's so invested. Everybody. Yes. When I say everybody, that means the fans, the guy pick cleaning up trash, the guy selling popcorn, like every single, the guy dropping off people at the game, everybody's invested, you know, in the game. Like it was the first time when I, you know, you say, yo team, we lost my team. We no, 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 no. Like you guys didn't lose. You guys are fans. No, no, no. When you look, when the Yankees lose, those fans feel like we lost. Yeah. And I love that. I love that about yeah. like you feel like, no, I struck out with you. You know, yeah. I stink with you. You know, like it's like you stink. I stink. You're good. We're good. And I, and I, and I love it. And I appreciate that passion. You don't get that everywhere. You do not get that everywhere. No. And it's, a, and it's an accountability that the fans deserve. A hundred percent. I'll be honest. You know, I'm completely honest. I remember waking up in San Diego. I tell people San Diego might be too nice to play sometimes. I mean, it's beautiful. You wake <laughs> up. It's like, damn, I got to go play. I could, man, like huh, you wake up in New York. That that better be out the window because those yeah. fans. You, if you if you if you woke up with that for a second, somebody in the crowd is going to be like, yo, he yo, he looks he, he looks like he don't want to be here. Like somebody's going to feel that. Like, yeah. So you wake up at seven year seven thirty game seven a.m. You're like, oh yeah. You're like, I'm hyping myself up at seven. Like, let's go today. Like, man, I nah, ain't booing me today. Like, yeah. It's, you know, it's like you know you it, it it should make you better, and that's what I like about it. It, dude, it's so true. C talks about it all the time on the pod, like how, like you don't want to disappoint these people, you know, like they you they are going to hold you accountable. And honestly, you, you'll feel it in a different way, but you'll feel it with the broadcast too, in the sense that they just like they're so they're so invested that you're going to be like I, you know. I can't slip up on anything like every one of my, you know, everything, not, not in a way that like puts unnecessary pressure, but in a way that's good in a way that, no, I, I, you know what I'm not, saying? You know, it makes you good, always a good pre- fine tune yeah. your preparation. Facts. It should. Yeah. Exactly. It should yeah. make you want to be tight, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. exactly. That's how I feel. It's to the point, Cam, that like when I do a Yankee game, like I rarely, 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 rarely will be on Twitter at any point during the game because it is, it, there is such a, a heavy volume of reaction that it can, it can kind of like take you out of like, you know, it's not like, Thanks. oh, there's one or two things here. It's like, it, it's a streamline of like anything you say is going to be, and, and, 99% of it could be positive, but that doesn't mean it's not that's, distracting. That's you why know? you are who you are, bro. Everybody's <laughs> not built for that. And it's not yeah. always just on the field. That's just like, People who live there are they? Hey, they're they're different, and I yeah. mean that. I yeah. mean it, and they're built for that. Like, like, and I, and that's what I'm saying. Like, it, you said it, man. It is. It, it's not easy to navigate. There. Everybody can't do what you do in New York, man. That's man. why I love it. You know, it's, it's so true, man. So, Cam, there are uh, there are guys who uh, you know are on the team who you played with there. You know, Judge obviously is one of them. Just had him on the pod last week. He was terrific. Sick, sick pod, yeah. Th- thank you, man. Yeah, gave me was, something to talk. Gave me something to talk about on, the, on my on my first radio show. So hey, there we go. Sick. Nice, man. You know yeah, the the great thing, like I, I've gotten to know Aaron really well over the you know last four or five years, and you know the thing that I I think like what I've noticed from Aaron is I think he really takes seriously wanting to be like the you know, the leader, team first guy, you know, shy away from credit for things. And I think in the beginning when he would, you know, do any sort of media, like his good hearted insistence on that probably restricted him from showing more of his personality. hundred percent. But, but as he's gotten more comfortable and confident as a big leaguer, you know, as his place in Yankee lore has, you know, become more secure, right? Um, never finalized until you win a championship with the Yankees. We all know that, but like he's become more and more like that Yankee, right? Like where yeah. this is, these are his years. You yeah. you could send, and it's his team, and he clearly is on his way to being a potential captain. And he's like, homegrown. You know, yeah, no, yeah. You could sense, and you could sense that he's more and more comfortable. And I think the podcast shows that, right? Like you you hear like a very comfortable Aaron Judge who shows his personality and and I think fans got a kick out of that. I'm so glad he did cuz he's he's a wonderful guy. Uh, Cam, how about you? Your impressions being in the clubhouse with Judge. What were the things that stood out to you about him, man? Bro, you said it, man. You said it as if you were in the clubhouse with him. It's the <laughs> truth. And I tell people, you know, and I mentioned those names for a reason. Uh, it's a lot of new faces since 2019, but you know, CC Sabathia, you know, unspoken leader 
Brett Gardner, unspoken leader. And I told people, Aaron Judge is the next guy up. Like, mm. he literally exudes what you want in a guy who, you know, it, it's, it's great when you can take all the good and all, and all the accolades and all the shine. But the thing that I love about him, he's the first guy, like, if something goes bad, he'll be the first guy to say, I'll go do the interview. I'll go talk about it. You know, he he'll take some heat. He'll take the heat for another guy if he if he needs to. And for me to see that again, I say younger guy, you know, he, you know, he'll be 30 this year. But to see his maturity, his his willingness to really want to be a leader, you know, you can't teach that. He and it's genuine. He and he, and he he's a leader because he wants to be great and he doesn't just want to be great for himself. He knows if he's great, he's going to galvanize people around him. Mm. Like he, again, that back to we said realizing who you are. Some people don't want to embrace that, you know, like even that, you know, that gift of people following, some people don't want to embrace it. He embraces that gift that Mm. people want to be around him. People want to hear what he's thinking. People want to know about his approach and people know like he's going to have your back. Like he's the nicest guy in the world, but if something breaks out, he's going to be the first person out there ready to square up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that's him too. Like big smile and all, he's going to be the first person out there ready to, let it go. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you, you can't teach that man, you know, having there, you know, the Yankees are lucky to have a guy like him after, you know, an era of CC after the long era of Brett Gardy, who was a homegrown grown guy to have a guy as talented as AJ and who wants to lead, who wants to not only be great, but wants to win championships. It's hard again, value that. Yeah. I can say that now on this side. Value that. Like, yeah. <laughs> yep. It, we think a lot of you, you, my whole thing, one thing that bothers me is like thinking guys are so easily replaceable. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, like, if it, they want the anecdote, I got the, I got the anecdote for AJ too. But hey, yeah. I'm 138 games. I already got 138. You're going to get some days off. You're going to DH. You're going to, you know, <laughs> oh, I went 138. He's still going to be tops of the league in RBI, OPS, slut. <laughs> keep him on the field. It's like, you don't have to worry about the injury aspect. Oh, well, he was the first year he stayed healthy. Hey, let's, well, let's manage him better. 138, 140 games. We're going to make sure he gets his days, his days of rest. We're going to make sure he gets his DH days. Keep him healthy. Keep him on the field. That Don't, don't undervalue that guy, man. He's special yeah. from a leadership standpoint, not to mention what he can do on the field. You know, it's funny. I was doing a, I was a guest on a podcast yesterday and, and they were asking me, do I think, you know, the Yankees are going to sign judge, should they, whatever. And, you know, I said, like, look, because when we answer these kind of things, people always think you have inside information. And, of course, sometimes you do. But if you don't, and in this case, I truly don't, mm-hmm. you, you, you like to make that clear so that people don't infer things, you know, from what you're saying that could upset the organization or, or anybody else when you don't actually have insider knowledge, right? So I have no insider knowledge on what will happen in their negotiations. But one thing I, I pointed out is something that that you just said, like, you know, the talent obviously is worth a certain dollar amount. And, and maybe maybe in anybody's mind, and I'm not saying the Yankees are thinking this way, but just in general, maybe like that talent could be replaced in different ways, right? And sometimes it can. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. But when you have a guy who so deeply understands what it means to be the face of the franchise that franchise is the Yankees who loves, clearly loves being, you know, the leader of the New York Yankees who says all the right things, who has a burning desire to win, who works his tail off, you know, like, I mean, those are a lot of things that don't always come with that level of talent as well. You know? So like to me, uh, there's a lot of incentive to make sure he stays around. I agree, man. I, I agree. E- yeah. Even if you got to cut some, you know, do some things on some other ends. Like, I don't know. For me, he's got to be the guy. He's got to be the guy, man. Yeah. And again, you, I mean, you made some, the, the most important points you made is like, everybody like can't handle that. Like, yeah. you know, you can look back and you can be killing it. I mean, killing it somewhere else. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't want to be a Yankee. I'm going to go to New York. That shit is different, man. Like, everybody's yeah. not built for that. So if you have a, you get a guy who's actually built for it. Yeah. You yeah. can't, you got to value that, man. Like, that's the thing, too. You can go, oh, yeah, I want this guy. He's crushing it. 40 homers. He, he, man, 
that that culo gets tight fast in New York. <laughs> man, like, that thing, you know, like it, it's different, uh, man. It really is different from experience. Uh, that's a great, that's a <laughs> wonderful way to put it, and it's a, it's a it's a great point because all of us who have witnessed. Uh, you know, Yankee baseball over the years or or many New York teams know it is 100% a real thing that some yeah. can handle and some cannot. And so your talent just may not translate. That's a great point, Cam. Um, I wanted to ask you about this. So, you know, we're recording Tuesday night, releasing Thursday morning, Union League, our meeting, uh, you know, still trying to work out the CBA. Um, CC and I have talked about this. Uh, at different times. And and just so you know, like my general position is regardless of the individual things that the players are fighting for right now or the owners are fighting for right now, like I think it is a very significant for both sides to not miss any baseball games because I, I personally think it's going to do damage to the fervor that fans have for the sport if you end up telling them like, hey, we're starting the season May 1. Like I... When you, when the last two years, and our audience has heard me do this spiel, so I'll, I'll tighten it up. But when the last two years, you've had COVID alter it in different ways, right? 60 game season, year one, no fans for big parts of last year. Like you have a chance to have a normal season this year. And the only reason you wouldn't is because of self inflicted wounds. Yep. And, and, you know, a lot of those fans, of course, you know, have been negatively impacted economically during the last two years and then are going to watch, you know, millionaires and billionaires fight. And regardless of whether or not within the micro, there are reasonable things to be fighting for and arguing Mm -hmm. for, which we know there are, Mm -hmm. like, I don't think you can lose sight of the big picture. And to me, the big picture is both sides should look at missing games as a daunting failure for their side. I agree. But, but do you, Cam, if you're in the middle of it, like, do you think, do you think, like, well, I'll ask the player side. Do players look at it that way? Like, do players look at it as like a this would be really bad for the game, for the business of the game overall, for the fans? Like, is that something that's going through players' minds as they're negotiating? You think a hundred percent? And it's not even I think. I mean, I, I got I can't speak on all players, but the handful of guys that I've spoken to who reached out to me uh that i've just you know that i've got to check the temperature you know where they are and everybody said you know literally the first thing they said is cam I, we want to play man like yeah. we missed it like we're ready to go like it almost it, it oddly almost feels like the first like chance that we had to have a real like a real go like a normal go at things again you know it's a normal go lead it's spring training and it seemed it seemed like the first opportunity since covid even after last year, it seemed like the first opportunity for things to kind of feel somewhat normal. And, and here we are, you know, like you said, and I'm glad I'm, I, I'll say from the player standpoint, they want to play, but they're also, and I, I get the fans, it's so hard to yeah. explain. Like, I literally totally understand now, like you said, like, I feel for the fans because we are going to lose fans. And I hope we can get them back, you know, like, like you know, people are fair weather and we, you know, you watch a commercial, you want a hamburger, you know what I'm saying? So it's like the, people are creatures of habit. So hopefully if we get things going, people are get back into it. But I think that both sides need to look at it more from a what we're doing from a fan base standpoint. And I, and I think that is a huge issue is like it's very much so I don't like y'all. We don't like y'all. we don't like this. It's like it's a you know, it's a. A, you know, a, P, a piss test, you know what I'm saying? Or a piss contest to see, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, that's what I don't like about it. It's like, we're really, really doing some serious damage to the to the fans that love this game. Yeah. But I get, but I get, but I get the players, the players are saying too, you know, again, Ryan, like I said, I was in a situation where I was one of those guys. I said, you know, somebody calls you and tell you, you know, 28 teams call you. That makes you feel some type of way, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because they can, you know what I mean? Again, I tell people a story that when I was in San Diego, 2012, we might have lost 80 games. But the team that they put on the field before the season started, you couldn't tell me that you didn't think the team had a chance. You know, mm. it, was a Mark, it was a Mark Kotze. It was a Carlos Quentin, Jason Bartlett, Orlando Hudson, uh, you know, a Will Venable, a Krista Norfia, a Nick Hundley, a Aaron Harang, a Jason Marquis. A Cor- you know, like they tried to go get, even if it was some guys that were on the back end, they were established veteran winners 
you know, we can't afford to go get those guys, but we're going to go get what we can afford and try to make this team as competitive as possible. And I still think teams deserve that. Instead yeah. of just, you know, instead of just saying, hey, we're just going to pay this young guy who, we, hey, he could pop or two, you could ruin his confidence. Yeah. That happens in the big leagues now, man. Yeah. You can ruin the top prospect's confidence in a heartbeat because you want to save money opposed to, hey, go get a guy that you can trust who's been through the ups and downs, who can weather that storm until a guy is ready to play and you can get the best out of him for his career. Again, I would like to see that. So I get it from a player standpoint. And I'm still more from, you know, just getting out the game. I'm a little bit more player biased. Of course, of course. Yeah. You know, again, because I get the reality of it. You know, I I had this conversation. I had this worry in a player in a, you know, in a union meeting two years ago at Detroit. And I told the young guys, hey guys, if you guys don't get together, you guys won't be free agents until you're 29, 30 years old. And you'll have one deal to get. You know, when I when I was coming up, you had a chance to get through ARB, come out of ARB at 24, sign a deal. You might be a free agent at, th- at you know, 31 and maybe still have a chance to get another deal. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, and it's like and in that, that guy could have been Jose Peraza, who just who I thought played amazing for the Mets last year. And you look up, you know, guys hurt, guys injured. Guys just don't feel like playing. And you get a guy like that who steps in, makes an impact, and he gets a minor league deal. And it's like, that guy used to make $4 million bucks, and he was going to make your team better. So yeah. now he's got to go into spring training. I hope he's going to do well. Like, unnecessary pressure when he's a big league player. And it's so, it's again, it's, it's for me, yeah, it's but the you're, part. You're, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm all about you're, you're winning. Right. You know, I'm all can, about competitive. Can, it's a great point, Cam, because if you think about it, all it takes is having a couple teams that are actively not trying to win to totally change what the market looks like for guys who are, you know, going to cost a little more, um, but are going to help you win games. You know, that, you, like, that used to would have got a deal for the Baltimore Orioles. Right, right, exactly, exactly. Now, now, now that veteran guy that you that would have got that deal, you know, seven years ago with the Orioles and possibly help a few guys. It's like. Mm, there's no point in wasting three million bucks. Let's just we'll lose again, and let's just yeah. put out a you know I won't say shitty product because all the guy you know he's a professional athlete, but let's got put out a non-competitive it's, product. Yeah, a, yeah, exactly. It's an you know? intentionally it's crappy like, product. Yeah. Exactly. You know, and it, it's it, like that's the problem. You know, and it's like for fans, I get the fans, and it's like for me, they look at it for money, and I'm speaking on my behalf. I look at it from a fan standpoint, like you guys deserve these teams to put out a quality product, win yeah. or lose. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So again, I think from a player standpoint, that you know, yeah, they you know, like you said, millions and bi- millionaires and billionaires are arguing, but from a player standpoint, I truly feel like what they're trying to do is essentially from a fan. Again, you said fans, right? Not not about the owners. Yeah, we want to yeah. give the fans something they can be proud of. Whether you win or lose, you're in the bottom. You want to say, man, that our team we lost, but damn, we we lost every game by one run this year. We led the league and. One run losses or two run losses. We were in every game. Next year, we got a chance. You know, it's like now it's like sure, about eight years from now, we might be good. You know, like if they want to be or, you know, it's like that's not that's not it. That's not the way on top of going through this crap. So you losing fans. You can lose fans in a lot of different ways. Yeah, it's um, Cam, it's a it's a it's a great point. And it's probably an underrated part of this. And and if you you know, if you look at the NFL, uh, you know, one of the things they have in their. CBA that I think is such an effective way to avoid something like that is, you know, they have a very high salary floor. You know, you 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 cannot do what the Orioles have done o- over yep. the last, you know, two years. You know, you have to. Uh, I don't know the. I used to know the exact numbers, but the, I mean, it's it's a you know, it's like a ninety percent of the cap over like a three year period has to be spent. You know, and it, and it and it it's you know multiple times over the life of the CBA. But that's a, I mean, the, the point is you can't get away. One team's not going to be spending 40 million while another team spends 200, you know, like that's, that's just not going to happen. It, it's not, a, it's not, a, you know, it's not something that's on the, the Rays table. Do, the Rays do an amazing job, but they kind of, they kind of messed that up, man. I ain't gonna lie, you know? Yeah. yeah. They can go win, Cause they can, cause they can go, you know, they can go end up in the, the, the AL East, you know what I'm saying? The, the AL Division Series with a payroll of 49 million bucks. And yeah. Scherzer's going to make, Scherzer's going to make that in one season. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. That, like, so, now, you know, it's like, oh, like, that's, again, it's like you got Look, an organization who's got a, you know, anecdote, I guess, for it. But, you know, it's still like, you kind of screw up everything else, man. I also, I don't love the way the luxury tax is either because it's so ridiculously punitive to teams that, 
you know, want to invest in winning. And, and you know, my, my general, I mean, I understand that Major League Baseball felt it was necessary for competitive mm-hmm. balance reasons. But if you're, you know, if you're worried about that, then you do also need some sort of floor to me because you're not worried about the competitive balance of the teams that aren't spending money. And, yeah. and, and my, my, you know, general, my other problem with that is like, so if I'm the New York Yankees and I want to continue to invest in my product, like every, if I want to be consistent about it, like I get penalized and I have not seen the luxury tax, you know, raise uh, at any sort of level proportionate to even inflation over the last, you know, yeah. five, six, seven years. So I, I, um, I think, I think there are a lot of things to be worked on in the specifics in general though. Uh, Cam, I love that. I love your perspective on it. And I just, you know, I hope we do get baseball without a delay. Cause you know, I think it would be a Ooh, shame man. for all involved if we don't. I didn't know. realize how much I'm I, like right now. I'm like, kind of, I've been on pins and needles. I'm like, you know, even though I'm not playing, I'm, I'm over here and I'm going, man, I, I really, <laughs> I've, I've, I haven't, it's just much, you know, I, I really like, I, I want to see it from this side now. Yeah, like, I'm man. So yeah, I get where the fans are and, Everybody who's wanting baseball back, I, I feel it even more than I thought I would be if I was a player. You know, being on this side, it's like, man, well, I want to see that. I don't, I don't like seeing this. I really don't. You know, yeah. it's, it's a little disheartening. I, I, I totally agree, Cam. I feel like it's something that really, I feel like it, this, this should be. It's, again, nobody was ready for December second. Yep. You know, but everybody took that almost like it. Like I feel like it was a big both sides, like a big, big ass joke, and it was like, what are we doing? Like. This is it should have been taken more serious, even going back that far. So we should have been having everyday conversations on December 2nd, every single day until we got yeah. to figure out, hey, if you did that, maybe they would have, it, things would have been going good. Like, hey, we won't even have lockout. We'll keep the, we'll keep talking about it, but we won't lock the doors. They don't have to lock the doors. You know what I'm saying? So it's like that's a lot of things that I feel like, you know, should have, could have, would have. But here we are now. The only thing we can do is keep our fingers crossed. Well, Cam, we're going to do that because baseball means we get uh 40 games of you on the Yes Network. Um, we, I can't wait to work with you there. I'm, I'm so excited for you. You're going to be an absolute star. Anybody who's listened to you at any point, uh, including here on this pod, knows that's clear. Um, so, dude, thank you for stepping in again for CC, uh, our, our go-to co-host. And Let him know. Let him know. I played today. I went out. I was rushing <laughs> back to get back. I went out and played around. I played my 10th round today and I shot a 94 today. I mean, Ooh, I, I, I don't know that. that. My, my buddy said that was good for a guy. It's my 10th time ever playing. That, yeah. A legit, yeah. a legit. I was like, you know what? I'm not going to fudge any strokes. <laughs> you that's, know, we can, you know, it hey, happened. Dude, for like, 10 time playing, that's, that is very good. I'm that hooked, is very man. good. I'm so hooked well, right now. So I know what we're going to be doing then if we're on the road uh, doing oh, the Yankee count series on it. together. Count I, on it. I can't wait. Cam, thank you so much, man. All the best to the family. Thank you, brother. Same to you, bro. Get healthy. Uh, I, I appreciate it, man. And you guys know the deal. New episodes every Thursday. Bonus episodes as well. Make sure you're following us on Spotify, subscribing to us on YouTube. Our new YouTube page is, of course, just R2C2. Just put it in the search. You're going to find it. Uh, C will be back next week. We we have, some, I think, some good guests coming up for you as well. Uh, So make sure you keep it locked in to R2C2, everybody. And big thanks to our producers, Sadie Zillow, Bobby Wagner, always doing an outstanding job keeping us afloat. Peace, everybody.